walk around and whatever you think. Bugs have kind of settled down a bit, haven't they? They know they've had their breakfast while they're taking it. They're yeah. waiting for lunch. Right. They're just excited about all the movement. How long is your trip, the whole trip, your whole tour? Mm. We came here on July 18th, mm -hmm. and we are returning on October 4th. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Just under a month, huh? Three, three months, yeah. Three weeks, huh? Yeah, yeah. three weeks. That's nice. Is it really tiring going all the performances and stuff? No, not at all. No? We love to do it. It's like painting, it's fun. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more set up for you later on? Other tours coming up? Mm, maybe next year, mm -hmm. um, three times. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a new situation. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Now when we return, we have to record new stuff. Mm -hmm. So maybe next year we can share that new stuff. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, great. Habrá que volver para así con caridad ver, te lo preguntas vos. Una luz consciente me envuelve, siento el ritmo de la verdad. Start the timer now. Okay. Another Sunday session. Alright. And Anne sends her regrets. She Aww. just couldn't ask Kansas. This is so primitive. I know. So this tree, the roots just started to get bigger and bigger and bigger over the time we've lived here. And now Scott has spent hours with chainsaws, pickaxes, all the shovels, 
<laughs> Let's just say he procrastinated about doing this for a while, and every time people would be over, we'd always have to say, "Be careful! Oh, be careful! Be careful!" They, um, the you know, the brick is being lifted up, and um, you know, if it was just me, Scott, like lazy Susan, I would have you know, instead of doing what you're doing. I would have just actually dug up new grass and just sort of curved it around like a yellow brick road. I don't, I didn't think you would do this. No, well, I know. <laughs> or, you know, or just, I would just, instead of digging all these roots up, I would have just kind of curved it around the roots. Well, we can't curve it over here because Why? we have the septic. Here. No, no, no. I mean, but just like maybe four feet, you oh, know, not yeah. far, far. Well, and then Scott's going to have to dig them up right over there too. Cause it's just like this brick path was just put too close to the trees. But well, I want to. We did this with a tiny little tree. Well, it wasn't tiny. Yeah. Well, but yeah. the roots weren't there yet, and I just want to document. Like, people think that you're super DIY. So I want to give you credit. <laughs> mumble, 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 mumble. So the um, hurricane. Ian, this actually just fell over last night. And you see it's a protected porch, so the fact that the winds were that strong and it fell over. We didn't get any damage. We got a lot of leaves blowing, um, chairs turned over. Um, oh. oh, I didn't even notice that. Look at that. That little tree bush, that thing right there is completely Huh. Interesting. Okay. But Scott walked around the perimeter and there was no major damage or anything, just lots of tree branches. Um, my tomato bush that was here was too tall and it cracked in three and Scott moved it over here. So I'll try and save it. But you see how it just got too tall. And um, you see things were just flipping off because the wind and I, you know, I, it, it was, these winds were definitely a lot stronger than they predicted. I think that they were telling us it was going to be about 15 miles per hour. And I think it turned into like, um, 50. Scott, it, he, you know, he had to take some small trees out from the road. And then we noticed just across the street here that there is an actual tree on those power lines. And he's over at our neighbor but checking his property, seeing what's happened. But in general, it's just a lot of leaves and it was really scary winds last night. I mean, probably five hours of just winds. I mean, luckily our house is built like a, a tank, but you know, other people's, you know, we don't really know what's going on. We don't have the internet right now. What's this over here? Huh. Is this? Where did this come from? <laughs> okay. Well, shows you like things are just being blown around from far away. Yeah. Cars are still going, and even in the midst of the worst part of the storm, cars were going by last night. I mean, psychos. I don't know where they were going. So we've been gone all day. Went out to breakfast, went to my studio, did stuff on the computer when we got home. This was what it looks like. There's like five, there's people parked in their driveway. There's like five of these trucks. And <laughs> he's like going, oh, it's so obvious when people hold their phones up now that people are filming. But this was the tree that was, um, you know, right across the street from us. It's amazing how they do this. Down there too. There's trucks parked in there. But at least they're fixing it. It's such a well oiled machine. But unfortunately, this tree will not bring us power back. <laughs> they need to kind of go down that road and get the trees that have fallen in the road over there. But it is, you know, entertaining since we don't have any TV. It definitely is entertaining to see how they do this.
Some of our plants fell over. Oh well, no big deal. They've been working on it for a while and they finally fixed this one. It's amazing just sitting and watching them. Like, wow, so many trucks too. And I've heard, I heard to the right of our house, some, um, you know, chainsaws and stuff in the woods. So they're obviously fixing that. Hopefully we'll get power. But I mean, these people do this in the middle of the night. I mean, it's amazing how hard they work. Definitely when I was looking at all the, um, the workers, I mean, the men are pretty much in their 20s and 30s. I don't think it's a middle-aged or old man's job. I mean, you have to have a lot of endurance to be doing this, like, 18 hours. But the people to the left of us probably got their power. <laughs> Yay for them! Around the world, different states, different countries, Australia. Sit down. You know, and, um, it's just, you know, we're so grateful for everything he shared in his lifetime, and it'll ripple effect until <laughs> to me, the end of time with our, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I love what Michelle said today. Um, from the so are we supposed to just talk whenever we feel like it? <laughs> I do, yes, I should hope so. I'll bet, I'll bet that, that you, you've got to rein her in though at some point. Only speak when it's useful. Um, but okay. no, I guess. Okay. Yes. You don't have to say another word. Because I was going to, I was going to start by. Um... <laughs> joke with me and Nancy has always been background colors and it's also something that a lot of people I think struggle struggle with what to do with with the background and I'm uh, the thing I learned so much from Richard is his backgrounds were always so exciting and just so completely in harmony with his painting but not you know a boring just one color and my favorite story that I always tell is that um one time he set up a background with he picked this horrible piece of cloth that was in our trunk at, at the barn and it was just this ugly powder blue with these little pink tulips on it it was just so ugly and i thought oh my god how is he ever going to turn that into a beautiful background and it, uh, it was just so unbelievable i think the painting is is in all of Prima. Um, I'd have to find the painting but it was so beautiful how he picked out the the icy blue and little sparks of pink here and there and he just used that color and integrated of course in harmony with the rest of his painting so um that's what i'm going to try to do but yeah, i probably won't get it right again but with that just have fun right i'd be so curious to know albert how you met richard when was the first time you guys met was it in new york or yeah 1957 or 1958 uh, he came in from Chicago and it was at the Greenwich Village Outdoor Art Show and he just blew me away and he got the uh, grand prize and all that stuff but uh, we go back um, I don't know I was 20 I'm 85 now 65 years ago Wow that is neat what was it like then uh, in New York you what were you selling your work in galleries or on the street? No, or? no, I had just begun. I had just begun. Uh, it was abstract expressionist all the way. Oh, really? <clears throat> it 
Real, oh, right. realism was in the closet. Mm, right. As a matter of fact, that's why I left and went to France for four years. Wow. I got tired of uh, 7th Street Bar and all, all that stuff. It was so, we were like um, hiding. You could count the realness on your fingers and, and maybe toes. Wow. I it's remember, totally different. It's totally different now. I remember Richard saying the same thing about New York. It was uh, kind of you guys were almost like the rebels in doing realistic art. <laughs> I'm here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask some questions to you folks that folks are asking. Okay. So um, the first one is um, I struggle to tone my canvas. Which color, etc so that I can create harmony through the piece. Where do I begin? Can, can anybody talk about toning the canvas? Kathy, I think this would be, probably be a good one for you. Um, your background has to harmonize with your painting. So I try to tone my canvas with something that I know is gonna work with most of the elements of my painting. And um, for the most part, I paint gardens or landscapes or you know, outside or even, even a fall setup like this. I usually tone my canvas in an earth color of a warm green and brown or green and red so that, and then when I wipe out, which is what I'm doing here, which by the way, Richard did sometimes, but he didn't always paint that way. He was much more out of frame on it, I guess. He used to say, get it right the first time. Why don't you just get it right the first time? which of course would make us all laugh. <laughs> but um, the best answer I can give, for example, I'm using a dark green sort of background here, backdrop, and, and therefore I just put a wash of uh, transparent oxide red with viridian and ultramarine. And I put it on the entire canvas without mixing the colors too much, so you're getting a lot of that. Uh, you can see where I kind of wiped out. I did wipe out to the white canvas here because the teacup is going to have a little bit of shadow on it. So, Kathy, what, what are you painting on? What surface? That's a surface I make myself. My the panels I make myself, which is um, it's a it's a board with a primer on top of it, a laser beam primer on top of it. Okay, and Scott, what surface are you painting on? I'm working on a Centurion double primed oil canvas it's it's a canvas that's uh you know primed with oil primer and it's uh been kind of wrapped and glued to a board uh cardboard board you can just buy them that way um they're just really convenient to put in your box and uh, i use them a lot when i'm doing these quick ones from light and from and some studio ones uh, they're just real handy that you can just stack a whole bunch of them when you're traveling and things so yeah that's great by the way how sue has the camera right now that's okay. good we can so we can see real clear there. She's a good, good um, camera girl. She is. She's brilliant. <laughs> um, Albert, tell us what surface you're painting on. Um, this is a, a board, <clears throat> um, 500 grit, <clears throat> and uh, uh, I get it from. Um, I I forget where I buy it from, but I. That's it. It's 500 grit. It's somewhere in between very light and very heavy. And right. it's, a board, it's a board, it takes water. Oh my dear. And Nancy, can, Nancy, can you actually zoom out of your painting a little bit, Laurie, back there? Just, yeah. just on that, to that, that's perfect, Laurie. Yeah. Um, Next. Yeah, my surface, I love Raymar and New Traditions. Those are just great. But today I did one, um, Richard and I did a lot of Masonite board, putting rabbit skin blue and white lead on it. And it is the best surface. The colors just go on so well. And um, I know Katie Swatlin documented it in, in that book, um, uh, the companion book, I think it's called. And yeah. uh, pulling this out today is like, man, I'm going to make them downstairs again. It's just a joy to work on. Um, and then uh, as for backgrounds, you asked about backgrounds. Yeah. I wanted to make sure, since she has the white blouse on, I won't have to do much with the, with the blouse. So I wanted to make sure that um, 